Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about the beautiful Jupiter. In one of the recent studies that I was able to discover completely by accident, we discovered that maybe just maybe we were not really correct about the origin of this planet. It seems that the uh, study from University uh, of Lund, which is in Sweden I believe, actually found out that this planet was made in an entirely different way from what we expected. So let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So, our previous assumption about this planet is that it was made um, somewhere where it's located right now, maybe a little bit closer to the Sun. And the way that we believe Jupiter moved in our solar system, and this is by the way known as the Grand Tech Theory, basically we thought that um, it kind of got attracted to the inner solar system and made its way closer and closer to the Sun, stopping somewhere around where Mars is located. Then, because it was so close to the other uh, objects that were here, it influenced a lot of planets and some of them collided with each other. And then, its friend Saturn decided to pull a little bit more on its uh, neighbor and managed to pull Jupiter all the way back to where it is located now at a distance of just over five astronomical units. So that's how we believe Jupiter was made. But the only problem with this particular hypothesis is that we don't really have any actual substantial proof or really any evidence of this happening. So we're kind of left with just kind of guessing um, as to where Jupiter came from. But this particular study that you can find in the description below talks about something entirely different and they kind of give us proof as well. So what they did is they actually created simulations, specifically very, very complex computer models that they ran many, many times where they placed Jupiter in different locations around the uh, solar system. But they weren't really interested in Jupiter. They were actually trying to figure out why Jupiter has such an unusual number of so-called Trojans. And not just an unusual number, but a different number of Trojans. Okay, so first of all, let's briefly talk about what Trojans are. You can actually see uh, me selecting some of them, but obviously not all of them. So um, first of all, Jupiter, just like every other object in the solar system, has several stable um, points of orbit known as the Lagrange points. There's one that's very, very popular with different spacecrafts. That we actually have a bunch of them between Earth and the Sun. This is called L1. But there's also two Lagrange points, L4 and L5, that are sort of um, about 60 degrees, this is basically 60 degrees, uh, in front of the orbit and 60 degrees behind. Now, this is known as the leading Trojans, and this is known as the following Trojans. And Jupiter has a lot of these asteroids uh, that it was able to capture over the 4.5 billion years in these particular points. There's about 7,200 of them that we've discovered so far. And it just so happens that for some unusual reason, there is about 40 to 100% more of them here in front of Jupiter than there is behind. And this is where the mystery sort of begins. We were never actually able to explain why the so-called Greek camp, as it's also known, has a lot more Trojans than the so-called Trojan camp. This is actually kind of named after the uh, Trojan War. Now, there is, like I said, about 100, possibly 100% more of Trojans here than here. And this mystery was never really explained. We kind of just have taken it for granted almost until this particular uh, research actually did simulations where they placed Jupiter in different locations of the solar system and then had it kind of travel around and basically explore the solar system for various reasons until they managed to simulate this exact scenario. They actually placed Jupiter in just the right point and as it migrated to its current location, it captured about the same amount of um, so-called L4 Trojans and L5 Trojans. Now, this is where it gets interesting. The location where Jupiter started was entirely different from what we believed. It actually started its migration from the region very, very, very close to where Neptune is today, uh, approximately 18 astronomical units away from the Sun. And this is kind of unexpected. It is somewhat more um, logical in a sense, because this is where you would expect 
for all of the gas giants to form. Um, at the farther reaches of solar system, where there's a lot more ices and a lot of a lot more gas near the sun, there is not a lot of stuff that was left when the sun became uh, basically sun when it became active. It most likely threw away a lot of this material in the onto the outskirts. And then once Jupiter was formed, um, it started migrating toward the solar system. Basically, it started changing its orbit relatively quick. This only probably took it about 700,000 years. And as it migrated, it started capturing all of these rocks. And then at a distance of about 5.2 astronomical units, it stopped. Although maybe it actually hasn't stopped completely just yet. And by then, it captured all of these Trojans that it has today. And it just so happens that there is so many of them here that um, if these Trojans were actually captured from basically the entire solar system as Jupiter was migrating toward uh, the Sun, it would actually allow us to study pretty much the entire history of the solar system in, well, one relatively easy uh, to access spot. Because it seems that these rocks are primordial pieces of the solar system that never really became planets. And because Jupiter traveled so much through the solar system, and because a lot of these Trojans are actually quite different from each other, it would allow us to kind of combine all of them into one long historical account that could actually potentially explain the creation of the solar system in a lot of detail. And guess what? NASA decided that it actually wants to launch a mission here. In 2021, NASA is going to be launching a mission known as Lucy that's going to do just that. It's actually going to go to Jupiter's Trojans and visit both of the camps, the so-called Greek camp and the Trojan camp. Here's actually what the path will look like. So this is basically 2021, we launch the uh, probe. It then goes to the L4 Trojans first. It explores four different locations. This will only be in about maybe 2025 mid-2025 until approximately 2028 and then it's going to take a few more years to go to the other side where it's going to study the L5 Trojans. The entire mission will take approximately 12 years so by then uh, yeah most of us will be pretty old but nevertheless it will actually allow us to understand the creation of the solar system with a lot more detail and because we get to visit all of these objects and also study them in somewhat accurate detail it even gets to visit a binary Trojan uh, at some point, we'll actually get to learn quite a lot about pretty much everything in our solar system. Now, this is the binary object known as Patroclus that is going to visit last. And if you look really closely, you'll see that it has a partner right there. It's kind of difficult to see from this angle, but a lot easier to see from this perspective. So um, we'll get to visit all of these, study them in quite a lot of detail, and uh, hopefully understand the creation of the solar system once and for all. Now, for now, all we can kind of do is, I guess, wait, but also hopefully future studies will actually run a few more simulations and trying to understand if, that, if this actually makes sense, because this, um, in a sense, means that Jupiter, on its way through the solar system, was able to collect quite a lot of data. It literally collected all of these pieces as it moved through the entire solar system, and sort of had them stuck in the same region of space known as the Lagrange points. I mean, technically this makes Jupiter a great collector of scientific data that may have helped us solve all of the mysteries all in one place. We just have to go to these Trojan points, or uh, Lagrange points that is, and study those Trojans in a lot more detail. But like I said, if this particular hypothesis is correct, this may mean that we're kind of now unable to explain the creation of Earth again. But this also means that uh, we may have been wrong to begin with. On the other hand, this is kind of how science works. And one day we'll be able to answer all of these questions with certainty. But for now, we can, I guess, only keep studying and watching and launching all of these wonderful missions like Lucy, hoping to discover the truth. On this note, that's really all I wanted to show you in this video. I guess in 2021, we're going to come back and talk about this again. So subscribe until then and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye. And if you've enjoyed this video, share this with someone who you think may enjoy watching space videos, and maybe even consider supporting the channel on Patreon, because it does help me quite a lot. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out. <laughs>